May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Take a seat. <coughs> so, one of the things we often do in churches is we describe ourselves by what we're not. You know, like, uh, we're, we're, we're Anglicans, so we're not like the crazy Baptists just up the road. Uh, or those weird Catholics just, well, they're actually down that road. Um, and I shouldn't say that, because they're really nice. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, in the Brisbane Diocese, we're not like the weird ones from Sydney. Um, or any of those sorts of things. Now, look, partially that annoys me, because I think it's important not that we describe ourselves by what we're not, but by what we are. That's important. But in the history of churches, and in fact in the history of people, the way we often form new groups is we get cranky with someone else and we describe ourselves by being not like them. You know? Uh, the official split between the Eastern and Western churches is basically a you believe that, we believe this, we are not like you. We, are, we name what we're not. We denominate. We name how we're not. And when I was growing up, one of the things that we went, the crazy mob over there, were the Catholics. I grew up going, <laughs> when I was growing up, I thought the Catholics were on one end of the spectrum, the Methodist Church, which in Australia is the United Church, was on the other end of the spectrum, and the Anglicans were the sensible one in the middle. <laughs> That's what I grew up with. I've since learned that the spectrum goes like this. So there's the Catholics, there's the Anglicans, there's the United Church, and there's a whole other spectrum like that. I still think we're pretty sensible, though. Um, but the thing that, one of the things that the, you know, those crazy Catholics believed was this thing called transubstantiation. Have you ever heard that term? Okay. To, to sort of give you a kind of a philosophical background to what it's going. Um, you know the, 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 uh, the saying, if a man says something and a woman's not there to hear him, is he still wrong? You might have heard the slightly less politically incorrect one. If a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? It's the same question, isn't it? It's about uh, receiving information. It's about receiving. And, and how much you know, of something is engaged in the reception. And so for Plato, who's uh, before Jesus, everything has both substance and accident. And the substance is the thing that is true about it, regardless of any observer. And the accident is that which is true because of the interaction with an observer. So a thing, uh, a picture might have certain <coughs> colors and pigments and all the rest of it, but it only has beauty if we see it. Bread might have certain components to it, but it only has taste if we eat it. So the taste is the accident, and the so you need to ex sort of be in that philosophical mindset. Uh, and if you think about it, sometimes easier to think about it with, with them. So that gives you your substance, that which is true, and your accident. Add to that this idea that a thing is true by how closely it mirrors the perfected version of it. So picture a chair in your mind. Now, if you look at a normal chair, you know it's a chair because of how closely it, it matches the chair that's in your brain, if you will. So, so there's this kind of flawed chair that we sit on and the perfect chair that lives in our brain. So, substance, accident, perfect, flawed. We've got all that. Then we come to... Uh, Jesus. And he says, take some bread, and he breaks it and goes, this is my flesh. He takes some wine and blesses it. This is my blood. And you can see why very, when you mix substance, accident, and Jesus saying that, uh, we get transubstantiation, which is essentially the idea 
But in the Eucharist, as the priest waves, as when I was being trained, his magic hands, that was the phrase we used, waving your magic hands over the bread and wine, what happens is God's grace moves into it and changes the substance, but not the accident. So any perception we have of it remains consistent, obviously. You know, you can look at it under a microscope, it's still bread and wine. That's our perception. But in reality, it becomes the body and blood of Christ. It's substance. Now, I, I have some problems with that uh, theology. One of my problems is that I don't actually buy the substance-accident dichotomy. I don't think Plato was right. Uh, that's one problem. Another problem I have with it is it relies on God doing some sort of sleight of hand, switcheroony stuff in the background. And I don't like the idea of God being a sort of a, a sleight of hand, kind of switcheroony sort of picture of God. I don't think that's the picture we get from Scripture. However, what I do like about it, what I do like about it, is as human beings we talk about ourselves in many different aspects. We are physical beings. We've got a body, and that needs food, and bread and wine is food. But we are also people who have a mind, an inquiring mind, and that needs food. And when we come to the mystery, and we engage in the mystery of the presence of God in the Eucharist, that feeds our minds. We might not get a full and complete answer, but it engages us, and that feeds our minds. Now, as an Anglican, if none of you were here, there wouldn't be a service this morning. Certainly not a Eucharist, I'd just say morning prayer. Because I don't get to do the Eucharist by myself. We do it in community. And it's in community, it's in the togetherness, the sharing, that we feed our spirit. And then we recognize that the blessing of God so infuses the bread and wine that it feeds our souls. It becomes, for our soul, true food. Its substance might not be changed, but it is deeply infused with the presence of God. But that only works if you come to it. One of the things yesterday we were talking about the Bible. Uh, and um, you, if you read the Bible and you don't come to it with a deep inquiring and uh, a willingness to open yourself to the Word of God, it's just a collection of stories from a long time ago. If you don't come to the Eucharist open to the presence of God, it's just a little bit of unleavened bread and a sip of wine. So we are invited to engage in this so that we might be fed a properly balanced diet, if you will. Balanced across all aspects of what it means to be a human. So that we might go refreshed into the world to feed the world. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.